Okay. Hello, 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 chapter heads. Uh, my name is Katie. I'm one of the two BLC student directors, if you don't know me already. Um, welcome to lesson two, which is collaboration and teamwork. We will be going through this lesson together just to point over a couple important details uh, that you might want to pay more attention to. Just a quick note before you have any sort of, um, before you present your slides, you'll want to click file, click make a copy, entire presentation, and then make sure you don't press this button uh, so that you have all the speaker notes included. Um, any edits that you make to your slideshow should be made on the copy. Uh, as you can see, this is view only. Okay, so just a quick recap again from last time, you'll want to remember to replace all text highlighted in pink, for example, the chapter name here, uh, because anything highlighted in pink will uh, be used to denote that that text is uh, according to your chapter's information. So it's specific to your chapter, you'll want to change that information on your duplicated slide. Make sure to remove the pink highlight on your slide as well so that you don't ruin the theme and so your slides stay nice and pretty. Remember the two prompt icons as well. There is a blue speech bubble with three dots, which means the question or activity is meant to involve the chapter members and their feedback. Uh, so whether that's a question um, and it has a little prompt bubble, it's not a rhetorical question then, you'll want to actually ask them and have them give their answers. Um, if you're virtual, you can use the chat or you can have people unmute um, and talk about uh, their answer. Or if you're in person, you can just have people share out loud. Um, if you see the notebook with a pencil icon, you will need to have chapter members use their workbook for this question or activity, uh, because it usually means that there is a specific worksheet in the workbook uh, for the activity there. And as we go through the slide, I'll definitely point out the prompt icons as well, so not to worry. Okay, so the first thing that we want to go over is the BLC timeline. This is the second lesson, so make sure to congratulate your chapter members for sticking with you uh, for the ride so far. A quick lesson overview, we have five steps here. Number one is the icebreaker, which takes around 10 minutes. The teamwork, which is the actual lesson content for 20 minutes. The teamwork activity, which is breakout rooms if you are virtual and small groups if you are in person, uh, which is 15 minutes. And then the finalizing project groups and reflection, which are 10 minutes and five minutes each. Okay, so for the icebreaker, these questions essentially just have your students start thinking about um, what sorts of teams have they worked on or what teams do they admire and what sort of leaders do they admire and why. And it really gets them thinking about collaboration and teamwork and what that means to them. So have two students answer each question and try and have different students answer so that you get a bit more uh, perspective. And here you can see our first instance of the little uh, chat prompt icon, uh, which means that you're supposed to have your chapter members answer these questions. The next part is a video about good teamwork and bad teamwork. Um, and what you want to do is uh, first read out the post video questions so your chapter members know about the questions and are thinking about them throughout the video. You'll want to watch the video and then you'll have chapter heads each briefly give a few example answers to the questions. So here, make sure chapter heads are the ones answering the questions afterwards, um, just because having each member uh, or having one member answer each question will take quite a bit of time and you have quite a bit of lesson content to go through throughout this slide. Um, there are two ways also of watching a video online if you are doing this virtually. Number one, you can just click on the embedded video here and you can watch it directly as you're presenting your screen. Um, or number two, you can send this link in the chat to your chapter members and they can watch it while staying on the call. Um, and then you can come together after everyone's done watching and debrief afterwards. Um, so this second method will help um, kind of get rid of that weird laggy presenting your screen watching a video scenario. Um, but if you happen to present your screen and watch the video and everything is fine, the quality is fine uh, for your members, then you won't have to take that second route there. Okay, here is the start of the lesson content. So we start with the three benefits of teamwork for perf uh, for personal development, sorry. So we want to list out these three and then go through the content here. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of text here. There are bullet points. Um, and the big tip when you are reading these sorts of slides is not to read directly from the slides. You definitely want to go through these uh, slides beforehand. So watching the video is a great place to start, but definitely read through all the information and know what's on the slides. You don't need to memorize things. You don't need to necessarily practice for hours on end, as long as you know the information and you can uh, paraphrase it and you can give examples and give your own experience into it as well, try and personalize it. That will make this a much better experience for your chapter members than if you were to read off the slides word for word. In the next part, you can see here, there is another uh, chat prompt icon. You were supposed to ask this question and have your members share their ideas. The next uh, sort of module into the content is about organizational trust. Um, and with these slides, something important to remember as well is that in the speaker's notes, there are kind of prompts uh, that you're supposed to include to string every part of the lesson together. Um, so here we reference, uh, we know teamwork is helpful for us, and that came from the previous icebreakers and videos and content. Um, and this one sorts of builds on that. So when you, when you don't read the speaker's notes here, and if you don't give that extra sentence, it sometimes can create a bit of disjunct between the lessons. So make sure you are reading this and you're able to give that connection between the parts. 
Okay, so again, make sure you paraphrase, make sure you're not reading directly off of the slides. Okay, and then we have how to lead teams with strong organizational trust. So the five things listed over here are the five key dimensions to building organizational trust. Um, and each slide here goes into each one of the five in more detail. Again, uh, go through these before you actually present so that you know what you're talking about and you have an idea of what uh, sorts of things are on the slides. Trust building strategies, this slide essentially just summarizes everything that was in the slides before. And it also has the chat prompt icon that you can see over here. And it asks for any other suggestions from your chapter members so that you can add to the slide and have more trust building strategies to pull from. There's also collaboration in the virtual world, which I think we all know now is very important after experiencing COVID-19. Um, feel free to include your own experiences into this as well. As leaders, you guys have probably worked also on virtual teams. Um, you may want to include your own experience and little stories into this, uh, into this piece here. There is a pair activity, so I'll go into this into a little bit more detail. Essentially, what this activity does is it gives the group a great example of how important communication can be um, in collaboration and teamwork. Um, so in this example, you want to first give the instructions and then break the group into pairs. So the instructions, you want to break the group into pairs. So that would be, you know, a breakout room with two people each if you're virtual, or it might just be if you're in person, breaking the room into pods of two. And in each pod of two, you would have a drawer and a seer. And basically what they do is the seer uh, will find an image, whether it's imagine from their imagination or from a book or from online, they will find an image and describe that image in words to their drawer. Um, the thing is that the seer cannot exactly tell the drawer what the image is or what exactly um, is depicted in the image, but you want to describe it through whether it's pictures, uh, sorry, not through pictures, through words, through features, through maybe even numbers, if you were describing how many numbers of things are on the page. Um, the seer is supposed to describe that to the drawer so the drawer can try and replicate that image to the best of their ability. Um, so make sure that the seer does not show the drawer the image physically or tell the drawer exactly what the image is. The drawer then uses the clues to try and draw the image, and at the very end, the drawer will try and guess what it is they are drawing, and the seer will show the drawer the image, and the drawer will hopefully laugh about <laughs> how different or how similar their image is as well. And so from this activity, we see that the seer is the one trying to improve their communication skills to get an idea across, and the drawer is the one improving their communication skills and their thinking and their understanding of what ideas are coming uh, towards them. So have the groups show their images and share what it actually was versus what the drawer thought it was, and hopefully some of the responses will get a laugh out of people. Okay, the next part of the lesson content is the group decision-making process. So again, we have a bit of a connection, uh, connection sentences here, um, so you may want to take a look at those and uh, see what you can do with those. And then for the group decision-making process, note that the main difference is that the individual uh, decision-making process is the one that the individual actually makes the uh, the decision. So versus having the group create a meeting and the group voting on the decision or making that decision together, the individual is making the decision themselves. Um, so that is the main distinction there. And again, you can go through the slides here uh, later on your own time to figure out the details of that. The group think phenomenon, again, uh, make sure that you're not paraphrasing. You can give examples, tell stories, really have fun with it as well. Uh, this one, brainstorming, is a counter strategy to the groupthink phenomenon that we discussed on the previous slide. Uh, so this one um, has a little bit more uh, of an activity sort of style to it. So brainstorming is not actually an activity, sorry. Um, it's when you're describing a sort of strategy that people can use to counter groupthink. And in this one, members will freely share as many suggestions and alternatives as possible. And no feedback or criticism is allowed during this brainstorm. It's just the rapid fire of like idea after idea, and you're throwing those out. And basically, at the very end, um, after you record every single idea that is thrown out there, the final group decision is the solution that people vote on the most. So you give out a bunch of ideas, everyone contributes, no feedback, no, uh, no feedback or criticism during that time. And then the group will vote on the decision silently and independently. Okay, um, so that is a way to com combat groupthink, um, and you can definitely provide an example for this as well. A uh, first uh, situation that maybe groupthink might occur in and that people might need brainstorming for. There is a teamwork activity here as well called Lost by the Beach. You'll want to read out the scenario and make sure you know have a little bit of fun with it. You can definitely put on a silly story, storytelling voice. You can be dramatic, you can whisper, you can yell. Uh, you can be very dramatic and silly with this one as you would like. Um, so essentially, you want to introduce the teamwork activity by explaining that you need to put together a team of people and there is a very hard job coming up um, and you'll need the best group possible to do it. 
Make sure you read the scenario on the slide and go to the next slide and give students a list of team member characteristics. And with this list of characteristics, you want to go through each one. Again, if you have multiple chapter heads, it might be beneficial for each chapter head to just say a couple of them. So maybe say three and then switch a chapter, they say three, that kind of thing. So you're not just listening to one chapter head, uh, list everything off uh, minutes after minute. It would get a little bit boring after that. So give students a list of team member characteristics and ask your chapter members to each choose five members to bring to this task. Each one of these numbers, so there are 16 people to choose from, uh, you want to choose five of those team members to create a team. And make sure that they write down their, their team of five, you know, by the numbers. So maybe their, their, uh, their choices are seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Uh, so make sure they write down the choices because they will have to explain their choices in small groups or in the breakout rooms in just a moment. These can also be recorded in the Lesson 2 worksheet section of the workbook as well. So in the breakout rooms, they want to explain their choices. Why did you choose these team members and how well were the characteristics influence the team? Uh, so have them answer these questions in the breakout rooms and have them come back in 10 minutes. The group dis discussion essentially just builds upon that again. So what were some of the popular choices? What sorts of characteristics are best suited to which kinds of tasks? How would you describe your own personality? Again, these kind of take, uh, take the discussion that happened in the breakout rooms and really just build upon that afterwards. There is then an optional part. So this is only uh, something that you should be doing if everyone uh, if some people still don't have groups or still don't really have an idea or project in mind. If you do have uh, most of the group or all of the group with ideas and the project in mind, you definitely don't have to do this slide. The slide essentially gives you the time to finalize project groups um, and allows uh, any students that still are missing a partners for the group or anyone who doesn't have a project group already uh, to find people. So ask your chapter members if anyone does not have a project idea yet, and then ask if anyone has a project and are looking for a partner. And then use this final few minutes to connect people. Encourage anyone who is still looking for team members to you know, briefly give a description of their passion projects, what kind of team member they're looking for, and then have them leave an email or some sort of contact uh, so anyone interested can talk to them later. Um, and then chapter heads, you may want to write down any sort of emails or brief descriptions so that you can post about this on your virtual platform afterwards so that you can make this information more accessible to anyone looking for a group. And again, you can definitely work alone. You don't have to have a group, uh, but the recommended number of people for a project, if you have more than one person, is two people, and then three maximum for very, you know, much more large scale projects. Reflection questions, these don't have to be done in lesson. These can be done after the lesson uh, and then have your next steps. So the next steps for this lesson specifically, finalize project idea, finalize your project group, which hopefully would have been done uh, in the session if it wasn't done already before. And a reminder that it is maximum of three people per project group. You'll also want your students to complete their passion project outline, which is actually hyperlinked here um, and have the assignment done by the deadline, which you want to change because it's highlighted in pink. Um, and this deadline should be uh, before your next session. So say your next lesson is maybe next Monday because your meetings are always on Mondays. You might want to have the deadline due for Sunday um, at 11.59, so before midnight. And then make sure you emphasize with your chapter members as well that this passion, pro passion project outline assignment is to help them. Uh, it's for them to have a clear plan to help them get started. And that's definitely always helpful uh, so that they can make sure that they stay on track with their passion projects. They'll also want to complete the worksheets in the workbook. Uh, so for this lesson, collaboration and teamwork specifically, not all of the worksheets in the workbook, and then have them check out the resources on your virtual platform as well. So make sure you change virtual platform to whether it's Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, whatever your platform is. Um, and then thank them for listening. Uh, and then remind them that they can now apply collaboration and teamwork to their life and their passion projects as well. Um, and yeah, that's everything.